Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel for another video. We've got the MGB in the shop today and we are going to go through the process of tuning it up. Uh, so when we took a quick look at it, we saw some of the plug gaps were off. Uh, so we're just going to kind of go through and do a comprehensive tune. We're going to start with the rocker clearances, we're going to fix the plug gaps, and then we're going to check some things that we may or may not need to adjust. So we're going to check the dwell, this car is still running points. Uh, finally, we're going to check the timing and then we will check the carburetors. Uh, you usually don't have to adjust the mixture in these. The only time I've ever really had to do much with carbs is if the car's been sitting for a long time. So most problems that you're going to have with your tune-up are actually on the distributor side or an issue with something else. So we're going to take a look, go through those steps, and hopefully this helps somebody. So let's get started. First we've got a tip. It is a lot easier to do most of this stuff with the plugs out. So. Since we're going to be pulling off the wires and I want to be able to put it back in the right place, this is what I do to make sure that the plug wires go back in the right spot. You can always follow the shop manual, that'll tell you the firing order, but it's much easier if you don't have to look at it. Careful not to tie the zip ties too tight or you'll squeeze the electricity. Okay, now with that off, we know just by the number of zip ties on there what plug we're looking at. So, or what plug wire anyway. One, two, three, oh, come on. The order the plugs go back in doesn't matter so much, but the order that the wires go back in does. So set your plugs aside though so that you know when you look at them if there's an issue with a cylinder that you can tell from the plug, you'll know where it's coming from. I don't know if it's showing up on the camera either, but there's some cracking in this tube here. Now it's just a breather, it's not critical, but I normally would say replace, well not normally, I would always say replace those hoses if you can, because that could lead to running issues. If it's not fuel line, just ordinary heater hose from a hardware store will work. Just make sure it's the right size. Okay. Start by inspecting our plug. So the color of it looks pretty good. That's a that's a good sign. You get kind of like a little bit of a brown a brown to it. You don't want to see bits of carbon on there, or at least not a huge buildup. And this is gapped pretty big for car running points. That one is smaller. And what we're learning is the gap on these is all over the place. So let's check the spec and see what that should be and then set them. Okay, now, the plugs are gapped right, but we're going to actually move them out of the way for this next test. Okay. 
And what we're going to be doing, since it's really easy to do right now, is checking compression. Obviously the engine is not going to start right now, but you get your gauge in, make sure it's in neutral, it is 135, okay. A question that gets asked a lot is what compression is good. Um, it's not really relevant. Your gauge isn't necessarily going to be accurate in the first place and then uh, especially if you've got a cam, um, if you've upgraded your cam at all you might have a lot of overlap. You could have low compression but when the engine's running it'll be higher. So it's really kind of a useless number almost. What you're looking for is to see how far apart are they. So generally within 10% is the number you're looking for. We're going to retest that. Maybe it wasn't in all the way. Okay, so we've got 135, 125, 125, actually it's close to like 137. So uh, the biggest difference is going to be 12 PSI between the highest and the lowest readings. And 10%, uh, it's within 10%, you see, because 10% of 125. It's 12, so just barely, but technically this is this is good enough. Within 10% is okay. Uh, if you see more than that, you start to question, well, are, are there issues with rings? Uh, is it a head issue? And what you could do is you could put a little bit of oil down all four, down each spark plug hole and run the test again, see if you get a different number. If uh, putting a little bit of oil, uh, like a teaspoon or so, if putting a little bit of oil in raises the compression, then it's probably your rings that are an issue and you gotta take the pistons out, redo the rings. If it doesn't help, then it's generally a valve issue. So you, you could have uh, your rocker clearances might not be set correctly. Uh, so we're gonna actually see if we can tighten this up because I haven't checked the rocker clearances on this. So we're gonna see if we can make this any better.
Most often just a little push, that's all it needs. All right, set down your rocker cover. Okay, now, if you go to the shop manual, you're gonna find an order that you should do these in. Um, if, whether you don't have a shop manual or if you just don't feel like looking for the page, the easy way, draw a line down the center of the engine, an imaginary line, don't actually get on a marker, okay? And then just, it's kind of like a mirror approach, right? So if you draw the line down the center of the engine, this valve is down, which means we should be checking this one. Okay, uh, if it were number two that we're down, then we should go over here to number seven. Now we should check that one. Uh, number seven is on the way down, so we're gonna check number two next. So, so that's how you tell. Just imagine there's a mirror here, and whichever valve is down on either side, flip it over, go to the opposite end, that's the one we're gonna check. And by the way, the way that the camshaft is, is set up, uh, I don't have one here to show you. The way that the camshaft is set up is there is a lobe on it, but the entire rest of it is just rounded. It's, it's not like it's higher on the extreme end than it is on the side. So if the valve isn't all the way down, it, it doesn't have to, there's not a perfect spot basically, as long as it's not anywhere on the lobe. The lobe's not gonna be more than half the camshaft. So if you've got a valve that's down or, or mostly down, you're generally safe to check the other one. Yeah. That actually is pretty little on the tight side, but pretty close actually, so we're gonna leave it. Again, that's what we're looking for. You want to be able to slide in your feeler gauge, feel some resistance, and pull it back out. If you can wobble things around, it's too loose. If you can't, then it is too tight. Now, okay, so to adjust the valves, we just did the mirror approach. We got two of them got down. Now we need to rotate the engine. And so an easy way to do that is to go around. We're going to put this in neutral just so we can roll it back. And then put it in gear, doesn't matter which one, and we're going to rock the car forward and hopefully you should see the engine rotating as we're doing that. So I'm going to get behind it and push a little bit here. See, valves one and three now are on the way down. Okay. And remember our mirror approach. So one and three are down. We're gonna do one and three sort of on the opposite side, right? So this would be six and eight. Six is a little tight. Eight's okay. So, to adjust the valves, gotta loosen this nut. And then you want a screwdriver on this. So this is what actually adjusts how much gap there is. And you want to adjust it until, again, you can get the feeler gauge in and slide it right back out. There are different tools that make this job easier, but honestly, this isn't that difficult. Okay, once that's done, Make sure your valve is 
and make sure your adjuster, sorry, is tight and double check it. Perfect. Okay. You know what? This one was a little bit on the tight side too. Make sure to drop your wrench on top of the transmission so you'll never see it again. And then go fishing. It's on the floor, good. You definitely need some of these magnets if you are working on these.